Bang. Neve's knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is taking a nap. And today we are going to check out the Cody Usler Duck. Duck stands for Daily Utility Knife. Or you could say the Cody Usler Custom D-U-K. So now this knife's blade steel is CPM 154. I did sharpen it. We'll get to that here in a minute. It has a titanium frame lock with micarta inlays and zirconium pivot and collar. So you can see the geared pivot collar on both sides and then the, the micarta. It's an inlay inside the titanium. Very beautifully done. Titanium backspacer, titanium milled clip. Let's get into this knife. So this knife's total length is eight inches long with a three and a half inch blade. Great EDC size. Let's do some quick size comparisons. Here is the newer duckling. So it's its little brother. And then let's get some more knives up here. Great size comparison to the Chris Reeves Sabenza. They're pretty much the exact same. And I'm just going to do a couple more knives that a lot of people know. Here's the Benchmade 940. Very close, but the duck is just a little bit longer. And then here is... The Kershaw Bare Knuckle. They are pretty much the exact same length. So, let's get into this. So first off, I just want to thank Andrew Tool for sending me this knife to check out among lots of other amazing knives um, that are absolutely incredible. You know what, while we're at it, I'm going to throw up one more that he sent, the Skiff Drifter. You can see the skip drifter is just a bit smaller than it. But he sent me, Andrew sent me a bunch of knives and he told me to use them. And that, I love hearing that because that gets me, that, that makes me able to do a real review on a knife. And instead of just touching it and saying, oh yeah, it looks good, good ergos, you know, like I actually get to feel if it has good ergos. I get to tell if it has good steel, I could see how it cuts, how it performs. And, you know, like I was a little hesitant and I, you know, I messaged him. Uh, it was actually about this knife, the drifter. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm using the other knives, you know, um, at least enough to do the review. I'm not really using the drifter too much. I don't want to scratch it. And he messages me back, use it. <laughs> so I, I like that about Andrew. Andrew uses his knives. <clears throat> and that's nothing against anybody who just safe queens knives, but that's not Andrew. Andrew buys these knives and he buys them to enjoy them for what they are. I think that's amazing. And this knife came with a KME edge and a, a great KME edge, but I could tell like it had been used a little bit, you know, it still had a great edge, but it was used a little bit. And then through my testings, you know, it got a little bit more wear here in the belly, which is, you know, usually where you see it. So I did put a new edge on it. Beautiful edge. This thing sharpened up remarkably. I enjoyed sharpening this. I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, the steel sharpened really good. The grinds were really good. I mean, everything went really smooth in a real, you know, in a, in a nice way. Um, and when I sharpen a knife like this, I tend to go at it like I don't care how long it's going to take. I'm just going to relax and enjoy myself and just go at it nice and calm and peacefully. And um, and yeah, like I said, I enjoyed this very much sharpening this edge. Came out really good. There's only two little spots, which is amazing, I must say, that um, were slightly different from one side to the other and i'm talking about like you probably i could show you right now and you probably wouldn't be able to tell it's just from me having my eyes so close to it on the stone and um 
I might try to show that here in a minute, but it's definitely not a bad thing. Like it's so good that I'm, I'm very happy with the grind on this knife. It's done very, very well. Now Cody Usler does like he does his knives on CNC. He is self-taught. So he's self-taught, does his stuff on the CNC machines and then does all the finishing work by hand. So like this blade is a hand uh, satin um, blade. Now the thumb studs on this knife are custom thumb studs. So I guess um, some, I, you know what, me and uh, Andrew did uh, do like a meeting together, um, not face to face, but like on a computer face to face. And we talked about this and I'm not sure if I remember it correctly, but this one I believe has because there's several models that he puts his custom thumb studs on and this one has it and then i think the duckling has the standard thumb studs if i can remember correctly which i think are zirconium but um so you can see that they actually look a little different i don't want to touch them together both of them work very well but if you look at this one up close it has the spiral on top and then like the gear pattern underneath which works so good like these this is thumb studs like that i think a lot of knives should have um like even the sabenza would be far better with thumb studs like this and i'm not trying to knock the sabenza it's just these are so good even for the reverse flick it's like they just they grip your finger in a nice way to where it's not painful and it's enjoyable to flick. And talking about flicking, let's get into the action. So let's lift the camera just a little bit. Okay, so the action on this thing is fantastic. I really, really like this knife. And one of its great features aside from you know all its performances and build quality is this action the detent is so good the sounds it makes i mean it's so easy to flick the detent i'm it's it's a good detent like a strong detent but it's just got that perfect break and it's kind of hard to explain without putting it in your hand so if you know you know about detents sometimes detents are really strong and you kind of feel like you got to kind of overpower it this is not like that at all like i explained in another video like instead of just going straight into the thumb studs like a lot of people would flick a knife i can literally rub the scale and if I slide up next to the stud, it'll go off. And I mean that in like the best way. Like it's just so easy to flick this thing. And when it goes off, it goes all the way. And it's amazing, amazing action. Now the reverse detent, there is none. Isn't that amazing? Like it's so early right there that it practically does not have one. I think that makes the action feel so incredible that it's almost like you don't feel a reverse detent let's see if we can get to it as soon as it hits that detent on the way up it locks into place it's right there look how close it is to locking up if i let go of the blade and i don't hold it there it'll just go right into lock up which has a unique sound and a unique feel now, even if you put a little pressure on the lock bar, you can still fire it, but you can tell it gets a little bit stronger. I've ten, I tend to know that about most knives, especially frame locks, so I just don't do that. Like, I'm really good with, uh, you know, curling my finger around. If I am going to touch the, the lock bar, I do it down low, and it's so simple um, to do. Now, the drop on it is so smooth. Now, this does have cage ceramic bearings. So the action feels very smooth, but it almost doesn't, you don't feel like the bearing is rolling. It's um, extremely smooth. Now I said in a couple videos already that this knife kind of reminds me of like what you would think a Sabenza in 2020 is because it has the bearings, the action, the drop. You know, all the things that a lot of people love in 2020 that the Sabenza just doesn't have. Now, I'm not saying that the Sabenza doesn't have that 
luxurious quality feel that it has. I love the Sebenza. I'm just saying like it's kind of like that thought process because the build quality is so great on this. The overall profile and I love this blade shape. Nice beautiful drop point blade. Nice amount of belly. Perfect amount of belly in my opinion. Nice good flat and it's nicely thin ground. Beautiful tall deep hollow grind yet it has a nice thick contoured blade that's so smooth like it's um yeah it's just so crowned that it feels really good and since it is so thick you can see how thick it is let's put it up against the sabenza really quick just because a lot of people know the thickness of the sabenza you see how thick the blade sock is it's pretty thick. It has the same crownness like a Sabenza. So up here, it kind of feels similar, maybe a little thicker, but it basically gives you a platform to put your, your finger on. Yet it gets down to a very thin edge. So the blade geometry is amazing. Nice and centered. I mean, this thing <clears throat> is really well done. Now, slow rolling it, since you have so much grip on the thumb stud, it's easy to pop out. Like you don't have to worry about popping. You know how sometimes you get like, you go to try to slow roll and it kind of pops out like that. You know, you don't get that. You can literally just pop it out, slow roll it. And when it locks up, it's so nice. It's very satisfying to slow roll this thing because once you break the detent, it's so smooth. It's like, it almost just pushes itself. Very, very nice. This thing is fun to play with. Now let's get to Ergo. So the Ergos are great. The thickness, and we're going to get to the edge in just a minute. So don't worry. I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. So the Ergos are fantastic. It doesn't quite feel like a Sabenza. I know it's a lot, it's very similar to a Sabenza, but it doesn't really feel like a Sabenza. It feels a little different. It feels a little thicker in this area and a little narrower in this area because it is. You know, and it's not by much, but you you know, just those little tiny details you feel. And then the area that you feel right here on a Sabenza, you don't get that on this one. It's um, a little bit more comfortable right there. And then you have this spot right there, which I'm just like falling in love with knives where I can get up nice and close like that. You can get up and do so many grips right here up close to the blade to do the fine detail work. Um, also... Like if you want to get to the tip, super easy to get to the tip. I mean, it's just, it's a perfect blade shape for somebody who does lots of different things, you know, that doesn't want a set goal on utility or skinning or, uh, you know, whatever. You could do it all with this blade shape. And that's why I love the drop point blade shape. And that's what it was intended for. You know, the drop point blade shape was made to be a, a very versatile blade shape. And it is. And like I said, the grip is just really nice. Now it's not really big. This actually feels bigger because um because of this depth right here. So it doesn't feel as big, but it's very, very comfortable. The clip, I don't really feel the clip too much. Maybe a little bit right here on my my palm. But if I go up here, I don't feel it at all. But back here, I feel it a little bit, but nothing that I would ever complain about. And it also works very well. It slips in and out of the pocket very nice. It sits pretty deep. It's not a deep carry, but you have plenty of knife down in your pocket. And it slips in and out so nicely. That tension, you feel the tension as you're pulling it out. Like, if you understand where I'm going with this. Um, some clips, like when you're pulling it out, it just feels like you're pulling the weight of the blade. This actually feels like you have the tension in your pocket. And it's pulling, pulling, pulling until you hear that little... Just a little bit. I mean, not much. It's But going in the pocket, you can do it one-handed. You don't need to tug your pocket and then put it in. You can just slip it in and slip it out, but yet you feel that tension that you want that secures it in your pocket. Now, let's really look at these inlays. This inlay work is done so nice. Like, if not for the texture difference, I wouldn't even know that was an inlay. I mean, it's so smooth. I love this stonewashed titanium. Stonewashed titanium is just perfect to me because for a user, this is going to cover scratches. The hardware is nice and big and very well done. Everything is so smooth. 
and you can see that it is a back let me close this well you know what? i don't need to close it you can see the backspacer you can see through it a little bit it is a floating backspacer but it does not move it's you see the the pins i get or the screws like one two three so there's an internal pin right there and then the screws you see they go all the way through to the other side the gear right here, very nice. You can even see right here, if you really look, the bottom of the gear. Isn't that cool? Now, this is just a titanium frame lock. It does not have a uh, steel lock bar insert, so that is definitely something to note. But, and also, I should say, sorry, I keep hitting the camera. It has early lockup, pretty early lockup. Now, I didn't do this, but putting a little bit of pressure on it, you can see it barely moves. But it's you can feel it's got that rock solid feel to it where you can tell um, as it moves over it's only going to get stronger. Now I did look at the blade and uh, lock face geometry and it looks so so nice. Even for early lockup like this it is I mean it's strong boy I mean it, it's definitely locked up like a rock and you can see the geometry that it's running into. This is perfect. This is the exact type of geometry you want to see from a carbonized lock face, um, you know, titanium frame lock that does not have a lock bar insert. Now, if this was flat instead of at an angle, I would say, man, this thing's going to have lock stick ha heaven. I mean, it's just, or lock stick hell, I should say. It's going to run into lots of issues. This looks like a knife that will just break in beautifully over time and continuously be strong. Now, you can see it has a collared stop pin Let's see if we can get it to come up okay so now look at how deep this collar is right here's the collar so it's starting to hit right here and look at how deep this goes oh look at that all the way around so that means there's a a collar that goes all the way around so there's a milling slot all the way around the tang of the blade for the stop pin to seat deep into the blade which is definitely going to help with strength and um and it having like a, a nice good area to set now i'm not saying that a, a non-collared lockup is better or worse i'm just saying that this one is very strong and you can tell it's very well done um another thing looking at the fit and finish right here does this is like polished let me get it my little rag sorry guys you can see that this is nice and polished and it's so smooth everything is done so well on this even back here you can just like you can see it's so well thought out like look at that so well thought out now the bad stuff man so much good could it have bad well i have to say that um this thing doesn't have any bad really the one thing i could come up with is the screws going through to the other side right here um i like it more when there's double screws i do like lock bar inserts but when blade geom or lock geometry is done to this level it doesn't bother me but i have to say that it does not have a you know lock bar insert now it also doesn't have any milling or anything on the inside I forgot to say also all the screws on this are on the inside i forgot to say that you can see the screw right there on the inside so that's very very well done um and then you can see the screws to the pocket clip on the inside but um so you know it doesn't have that it doesn't have the over travel stop so but it doesn't I mean, does it need one? I don't unspring a lock. So I've never really unspringed, unsprung a lock. I guess you could say it like that. But I have to say, it doesn't have an over-travel stop. It does not have a lock bar insert. The screws do, um, are only one-sided. So uh, that, that is a thing. Um, another thing, the lock bar is super easy to unlock. I mean, this is so comfortable, almost... It's very, very nice. Very, very nice. Now, if you, you put your thumb up too high, it's not going to be able to go down. But I've never had that problem because I always just use it where it's supposed to be, right there.
Now, the only other thing that's bad is the price. And I say that not because it's not worth it or anything like that, but just because I can't afford it. So on the secondary market, this goes between $1,500 and $1,750 on the secondary market. But it is an exquisite knife, and I don't use that word loosely. Let's get to the edge really quick and then finish this up because we are already 20 minutes in. So I did put a 1200 grit finish on there. If he tends to want a, a mirrored edge on there, I have no problem doing that. This is CPM 154 and I found from my experience that CPM 154, even though it polishes so good, it does better with, a, with some bite because it almost polishes too much. And then the edge is almost like a wire and yeah, it's sharp, but it's not sharp by the way of teeth. It's sharp because there is no teeth, if that makes sense. Um, so I like a knife to have a little bit of teeth because that way it's actually cutting rather than the wire, like it just being so thin that it's cutting. This way it has teeth and is cutting, if that makes sense. Anyways, it is ridiculous ridiculously sharp i mean this is scary sharp and you can run your nail up it very nice and smooth edge everything came out so good now the one spot where it is a little different from the one side i don't know if i can get this to come up on camera right but there's one little area right here that drops down you probably can't even see it doesn't matter i shouldn't even put this part in the video <laughs> And then the tip on this side, it could be my fault, but it's a little bit bigger than the other side. Not by much, though. You you probably can't even tell. <laughs> I don't know why I critique things that much. It's just I you know I want you guys to see this on a microscopic level. So let's actually look at this edge. Okay, so I measured this thing about fourteen thousandths behind the edge, and what I'm trying to show you here is the grip pattern and how consistent it is from one side to the other and how straight the lines are how flat the edge is in just a moment we're going to zoom into a microscopic level i did have trouble um going up and down the entire edge so i just basically show portions of it but the entire edge is very consistent the entire grip pattern from heel to tip is all very consistent they're all going the same direction so let's get to that microscope right here i'm just showing you down the edge so you can see how flat it is all right here it is on a microscopic level sorry about the dust when you get this close to an edge on a microscopic level there's nothing you can do about little dust so excuse the dust but you can see here the grit lines and the grit pattern how even it is now you don't see other scratches i'm sorry about the shakiness this is very difficult for me to do i do this by hand so here it is on a lesser magnetic so the one was about 16 times or no wait sorry the other one was 60 times this one's 40 times magnification so this one's a little less powerful but you can still see how flat it is all right guys i love you guys thank you andrew and peace out